Welcome to Music History Monday for June 5th, 2023. I'm Bob Greenberg, and the title for today's podcast is Never Eat Anything That Can Bite You Back. If you haven't already, please consider joining me on my subscription site at patreon.com slash Robert Greenberg Music, where I blog, vlog, podcast, pontificate, review, and bloviate four to six times a week. On June 5th, 1977, 46 years ago today, the shock rock superstar Alice Cooper's pet boa constrictor and concert co-star, a creature rather cleverly named Julius Squeezer, suffered what turned out to be a fatal bite from a live rat it was eating for breakfast. No doubt, Julius probably should have ordered the scrambled eggs and toast, and in doing so, would have heeded the advice offered by the title of this post. Never eat anything that can bite you back. This is a heartbreaking tale, a tragic love story between a boy and his reptile, a love story brought to an ignominious end by an alpha rodent. But it is also a story of hope, renewal, and love rekindled. As the auditions Alice Cooper subsequently held for a replacement snake allowed him to discover his new boa, a precious girl snake named Angel. Now, of course, we're going to expand on this saga of reptilian eradication by rambunctious rat and subsequent replacement in just a bit. But first, we'd observe two other date-related items. First, we mark the birth on June 5, 1941, 82 years ago today, of the pianist Marta Argerich in Buenos Aires, Argentina. To my ear and mind, Argerich the pianist is an enduring miracle. When she plays in public, which since the 1980s has happened with painful infrequence, we listen because her technically flawless pianism is expressively and intellectually compelling. Like the greatest of actors, and I'm thinking here of people like Laurence Olivier, Meryl Streep, Daniel Day-Lewis, and Katharine Hepburn, actors who become one with the roles they play, so Marta Argerich has that alchemical ability to become one with the music she plays. Speaking as a composer, this is to me the greatest and rarest gift a musician can have. To remove one's own ego from a performance and live entirely through music as it is written. This might sound a bit flaky, but it's true. A Marta Argerich performance, quote, volatile, explosive, quixotic, astounding and mesmerizing, unquote, though it may be, is never about Marta Argerich. Rather, it is about the music she is performing. Like her living pianistic contemporaries, Vladimir Ashkenazi, born 1937, Maurizio Pollini, born 1942, Murray Pariah, born 1947, Andras Schiff, born 1953, and Christian Zimmermann, born 1956, Argerich is truly an advocate for the composers whose music she plays. But unlike all the marvelous pianists just mentioned, Argerich's legend is such that the mere implication that she might show up to a venue and actually perform will sell out a house in minutes. In order to discuss Maestra Argerich in the manner she justly deserves, and as well, to recommend three of my favorite Argerich recordings, she will be the topic of tomorrow's Dr. Bob Prescribes post. Be there. Okay, moments ago I mentioned that we'd get back to Alice Cooper's snake and the rat after having discussed two other date-related items. The first was Marta Argerich's 82nd birthday. The second item follows under the heading of Can We Really Blame Him? 
On June 25, 2003, and even 20 years ago today, a pirate radio station in Wakefield, Yorkshire, in the United Kingdom, was shut down by local authorities. The pirate himself has been identified as a grandfather who went by the rather questionable name of Ricky Rock. Grandpa Rock had set up a 32-foot-high radio transmitter in the garden of his house and had taken it upon himself to illegally broadcast hits by Elvis Presley and such bands as the Beatles and the Beach Boys. When questioned as to why he had done such a thing, this Robin Hood of the airwaves told the authorities that his local radio stations did not address the listening needs of his generation, instead playing music by what he called, quote, talentless boy bands and dance music, unquote. Can we blame Granddad Ricky Rock for doing what he did? No, we cannot. Alice Cooper, born 1948. Vincent Damon Fernier, eventually to be exclusively known by his stage name of Alice Cooper, was born in Detroit, Michigan on February 4, 1948. Called the godfather of heavy metal shock rock, Cooper's act helped reshape rock concerts from songs to spectacles. His macabre, horror film-inspired stage persona and stagecraft features such props as outlandish costuming, guillotines, electric chairs, lots of fake blood, baby dolls, weaponry, and, of course, snakes. Uh, we would rightly observe that Cooper is also known for his sense of humor. He is, as well, an avid golfer, a big-time sports fan, and the father of three children, two daughters and a son. Off stage, he is known to refer to himself in third person as Alice in his ongoing effort to distance himself from his stage persona. Snakes. The mythology of snakes could not be more varied. According to such diverse civilizations as those in ancient Egypt, ancient Greece, and various indigenous North American cultures, snakes symbolized fertility, rebirth, transformation, healing, and even immortality. However, thanks to a particular snake's role in the expulsion from the Garden of Eden, the Christian tradition treats them as evil creatures representing chaos, temptation, and the forces of darkness. Yes, this Christian vision is reinforced by the near-universal human fear of snakes, no doubt a vestigial evolutionary defense against the poisonous creatures our ancestors faced in the wild. For your viewing pleasure, a brief Alice Cooper tour ad made in 1977 featuring none other than Julius Squeezer himself, is linked to this post. We can be assured that Alice Cooper's affection for snakes was not based on the Egyptian, Greek, or indigenous American fondness for the critters. In fact, without meaning to delve too deeply into his psyche, we would nevertheless observe that Cooper's entire stage persona particularly the snakes, was likely calculated to give his father a singular pain where the sun did not shine. You see, Alice Cooper was raised in what might be considered an excessively religious household. His father, Ether Moroni Fernier, 1924-1987, was an evangelist in the Church of Jesus Christ, a Christian restorationist church informally known as the Bickertonites, that believes in the Book of Mormon as gospel. Cooper's paternal grandfather, Thurman Sylvester Fernier, was both an apostle of the church and, from 1963 to 1965, its president. That's a lot of church, 
and we cannot help but wonder if young Vincent slash Alice was expected to pick up religiously where his grandfather and father had left off. If he was so expected, his father and grandfather were sorely disappointed. Instead, Cooper's embrace of Satan-loving heavy metal, the macabre, and snakes, which cannot have gone over well with his father and grandfather, which seemed to indicate a calculated rejection of the religious mores and teachings that would have dominated his childhood. Back to boa constrictors in general, and Julius Squeezer in particular. Alice Cooper's first reptilian mascot was a boa constrictor named Kachina, which was given to him by his drummer, Neil Smith. Kachina was the cover girl for Cooper's fourth album, entitled Killer, which was released in 1971. Sadly, a series of boa constrictor slash plumbing related calamities followed. Kachina was followed by Chichita, who managed to escape down a toilet in New York City, never to be seen or heard from again. Chichita was followed by a 12-foot-long monster named Yvonne, who made her getaway from a Knoxville, Tennessee hotel room, recounts Alice Cooper, quote, I put her in the bathtub overnight, as she loved to swim, but by the morning she had gone down the toilet. She eventually emerged two weeks later in a different bathroom, having survived on sewer rats in the plumbing." Unquote. It's true. Yvonne emerged two weeks later in a different room in the same Knoxville, Tennessee hotel. Under the heading of no one could possibly have made this up, she slithered out of the toilet in a room occupied by the country music star Charlie Pride whose first major hit, released in 1966, had been the song Snakes Crawl at Midnight. You know, we can only hope that Mr. Pride was not himself using the toilet when Yvonne chose to come up for air. As we have already observed, the catastrophe that removed the next boa, Julius Squeezer, from the gene pool was not plumbing related, but rather a result of breakfast gone awry, killed by the live rat Julius was himself meant to feast on. Julius had shared the stage with Alice Cooper many times, and Cooper was distraught by the turn of events that led to his untimely demise, saying, quote, It was a bit like being bit on by your Wheaties, unquote. Finding a Replacement ASAP. The timing of Julius's demise was bad. Cooper's band was about to embark on a major concert tour on June 13, 1977, which began just eight days after the run-in with the rat. That major tour, which was being called Alice Cooper's King of the Silver Screen Tour, was an extended performing junket across the United States and Canada meant to publicize Cooper's just-released album, Whiskey and Lace. The tour's kickoff concert was to take place in what was then called Anaheim Stadium and what is today called Angels Stadium, the massive, at the time, 43,250-seat home of the Los Angeles Angels baseball team. The concert was sold out and featured as well the warm-up bands Sha Na Na, Nazareth, The Tubes, and The Kinks. Alas, there was little time for Alice Cooper and his people to grieve for Julius Squeezer as a replacement had to be found pronto. A public audition was announced. It took place at the ABC Entertainment Center in Los Angeles' Century City. Among the panel of judges that day were Howard Kalin and Mark Volman from the comedy rock and roll duo Flo and Eddie. Forty different snakes answered the casting call. It was a nine-foot boa named Angel, 
owned by a seven-year-old named Gandhi Newman that stole the judges' hearts and got the gig. Not only did Angel prove herself to be a trooper on stage, but she had, bless her, camera charisma as well. And as such, she played a major role in a documentary film of that tour beginning concert, a flick entitled Alice Cooper and Friends. And then, and then days later, it was not tragedy that struck, but bureaucracy. The headline that appeared in the June 23, 1977 edition of the Montreal Gazette said it all, quote, Alice Cooper's snake can't enter Canada, unquote. The accompanying article went on to explain that, quote, Alice Cooper must appear in Vancouver without his co-star, Angel, because she is a snake without a country, unquote. A snake without a country? Really? Shep Gordon, Alice Cooper's manager, did his best to explain, quote, Cooper only last week acquired the services of Angel, a nine-foot boa constrictor, but was forbidden to take it across the border for a concert in Vancouver. Canadian officials demanded papers stating the country of origin and antecedents of Angel, and in the short time available, we were unable to trace the reptile's roots, unquote. Angel's legal owner, the seven-year-old Gandhi Newman of Los Angeles, who had loaned Cooper the snake, was incensed and petitioned his congressman to have Angel declared an American citizen, quote, by virtue of being part of the Newman family, unquote. Again, according to Shep Gordon, Cooper's shows would go on using, quote, local talent, whatever the snake dealers of Canada can provide, unquote decorating the stage a bit differently. Alice Cooper was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame on March 14, 2011. Remaining in character, Cooper appeared at the ceremony wearing a blood-splattered shirt, we assume a fake blood-splattered shirt, and with a live albino Burmese python wrapped around his neck. During his speech, in reference to the boa, Cooper said, quote, We've always been a hard rock band. We just decorated it a bit differently. Unquote. Thank you. To sample and download one or all of my many courses on subjects musical produced by The Great Courses slash The Teaching Company, please visit my website at robertgreenbergmusic.com dot com.